Hello, I am going to walk you through a very simple tutorial on how to make a bucket wheel. My pieces are kind of already cut and almost put together because I am basically remaking my bucket wheels. Um, so I'm going to tell you the pieces you need, how we went about cutting them, how to put them together, and hopefully that will get you to where you need to be. So, first thing you do need to do is gather your materials. You will need a five gallon bucket. These are available at home improvement stores. Uh, home Depot has the orange ones. I think Lowe's has blue ones. Walmart has blue ones. Our Home Depot has football branded ones. So they're different colors depending on your local teams. Um, the uh, local home improvement stores may have different colors. They're available pretty much anywhere. You'll need PVC pipe. This is three quarter inch. You will need two four inch sections for these back legs here. Mine, mine. Before I go any further, mine are cut to fit in a cookie sheet. Like I think it's in maybe a nine by eleven, just a standard. Well, you would bake chocolate chip cookies on to catch the waste runoff. I think that's the, that's the easiest way that I've found to do it. If you don't use that method or you want a bigger base, you can cut these to different sizes. This is just what I like. It's stable. Um, so this is just a guideline to start out with. So you want... because go, So going off of that, two four-inch pieces for the back here two seven inch pieces for the legs here one seven and a half inch piece for the stand part two 90 degree elbows three caps which is well, are these one two three and one T which is this piece on the back here right there and on this stand here I have one hole drilled. This is a quarter inch bit, drill bit. And the this one I think is about six and a half inches. Mr. Quills, my, one of my hedgehogs, is at I think five and a half inches. And it kind of depends on how big your hedgehog is, whether you want it higher or lower. And if you drill it too low and it drags or something, you can always rotate it 90 degrees and drill it from this angle or you can drill it up above it so don't stress on where to put that as long as it's up towards this top end in the last couple of inches okay so your hardware to put the roller blade wheel which is something else you will need you can get these on amazon probably ebay maybe your local skate shop i haven't been able to find them at my walmart but they may carry them local to you you need a carriage bolt. This one's a little bit longer than I probably should have gotten. You need a quarter inch it's the diameter and probably three inches or three and a quarter inches works good. So the, the carriage bolt has threads and it's blunt here and it has a big head here. Um, and that goes through your rollerblade wheel and through the stand and through the bucket to attach everything together. So you'll need the carriage bolt, you'll need a hex nut that fits the carriage bolt so it's a quarter inch hex nut. You'll need two washers. Hands are dirty. Like I said, this one has been used so it's, I'm getting grease on my hands. It's okay. And a quarter inch wing nut to lock everything in place. And you also need zip ties. These are six inch, so it seems to be a good, um, a good length because it gives a, it's a good width too. Because once you get any longer, you start getting really wide, and you don't have enough room to hook it through your rollerblade wheel. So, you, and then you need a drill with a smaller drill bit, smallish. I honestly don't know what size this is, but you can see it's fairly small. You want it kind of to match up with the size of your zip ties. If you want to 
to use that as a guide. For the hole in the middle of the bucket, I use a Forstner bit, which is, it looks like this. It is in your drill. I'm sure mine has orange on it because I just drilled the holes. And it has a little spike here that anchors it. And then this spins and it drills a perfect hole. You can buy these at a home improvement store. I think you could probably drill the hole maybe with a Dremel. You might be able to melt it out with a, um, like a soldering iron. Um, this is the easiest. They're a little expensive. Not too bad. I honestly don't have prices for them. Um, but they're worth it. They make life really easy. And they make perfect holes. You just line it up with the center of the bucket. Most of them have a little, little lip right in the middle where the mold left a little divot. You just set it in the middle in this perfect, perfect hole. And after you've gotten that drilled, you drill your holes for your zip ties around the outside. And those will change positions depending on the pattern of your spokes in your rollerblade wheel. So you'll want to lay it down and maybe mark some, either mark some holes or you, if you're brave, you can just use your drill and drill, drill holes for your zip ties. So that's the pattern, that's what I've got going on here. So I've got, I've got the hole here where my carriage bolt goes through and I've got holes for my zip ties right here. Um, one thing I don't think I've mentioned is what after you have cut your bucket down, we cut ours down to five and a half inches from the outside where you do it. We use a table saw. You could probably use a Dremel. Um, much much bigger than that, the bucket starts flexing. Any smaller than that, there's not enough room for the bigger hedgehogs or animals to run. Once you've gotten it cut, you want to run around the outside edge with some, this is just 100 grit sandpaper to make sure there's no burrs or rough spots or anything for them to get caught or you know, rub, rub a sore on or catch their eye on or anything. Some Roller, roller blade wheels come with a little spacer in the middle. They look like this when you take them out. Uh, they're not one piece. They kind of look like one piece because they're on both sides. But if you just take a flathead screwdriver and pop up, they'll pop out. Just wanted to add that because I was a little confused at first. So you've assembled your stand. And there are plenty of pictures online of what stands should look like. And if not, you can, you know, come back and check mine out. They're, I mean, easy to assemble. Once you've got that assembled, set it to the side. Then you want to put your wheel on your bucket. And the easiest way to do that is to... Put your, you always want, you want to put your zip ties on from the back and then and pull it through, but don't tighten them down before you move on to the next one because you want to have plenty of room to work while you are while you're putting them on. I made this mistake. Um, if you tighten them down, the wheel won't move enough to let you get the other zip ties on. It will. I mean, you can't. You can do it. You'll be real angry. So after you've gotten that done, I'm not going to make I'll sit through that. You want to, oh, I forgot to take the spacer out, I grabbed the wrong wheel. Okay. Your carriage bolt goes in from this side. Carriage bolt goes in first. 
it will stay on with the zip ties, I promise. I haven't tightened the zip ties down. One thing I will say is you want your hole here to be big enough that that, that does happen because you don't want it to get bound down. You want it to turn. So, carriage bolt, hex nut next. Spin it down, all the way down. Spin it down, all the way down to your wheel. Then your washer, then your stand. legs out so I don't there we go and your stand is lined up okay. stand washer wing nut and had I tightened <laughs> the zip tie down, we would now have a, have a functioning wheel. So, since I didn't, I will show you one where I did. So, zip ties are tightened down. This is actually a Carolina wheel, Carolina storm wheel. I just replaced the bearing on. So I had to take the uh, roller blade wheel off. But this is what it should look like put together. You have your wing nut, washer, washer, hex nut, roller blade wheel. And on the inside you have carriage bolt, the in, inside of your carriage bolt. And you can see your zip ties here. And you can see the heads of your zip ties are back here. And that's really all there is to it. This should spin freely, it shouldn't squeak, it shouldn't wobble. Um, so there you go. If you have any questions, let me know. If you think I forgot anything, let me know and I'll add it in, this, in the description. If you have any questions about where to get something, let me know and I'll try to send you links. And thank you.